As the winds of winter roll in and the first snowflakes fall down, you start to realize that, man, winter is a cold, depressing place. So let's focus on something else, something that is a bit more joyful, warmer, and filled with glee. Like being a communist dictator in an island paradise. That's what the core idea of Tropica was. You would be El Presidente. You would be the head honcho. You would be the be all and end all of everything that is to be and not to be in your own island paradise nation. You are the supreme ruler. There is no one else above you, not even the people. Something emphasized by the way in which everybody starts out living in a shack made out of planks and garbage while you you begin with a palace. A palace with armed guards because if they weren't armed and were not guarding you, how long would it take for the people to just waltz in, kick you out and live there instead? Probably not long. Tropica was made by a studio called Pop Top Software. It hasn't been a studio for many many years, with some of the employees now being part of Firaxis. But when it was an independent studio, it created Tropico. Again, game that is, without a doubt, one of the most influential city builders of its time. How influential was it? Influential enough that I saw a news piece about it in 2001 on Euronews. I remember it clearly because the intro of the game was playing on the background when the news piece was on. It was about the game being banned or was going to be banned somewhere. I cannot for the love of me remember where and I've searched high and low and still have not found a mention of the incident. Only the Tropical 5 was banned in Thailand for a while. It is a game that absolutely made a splash. And then it sort of went away on account of the whole city building genre sort of went poof a couple of years ago and then came back. And it's been coming back ever since with very little actual improvements with each successive version to the point where Tropical 3 was Tropical 1 in 3D. There were not really that many changes. And some would say well, what would you want to be changed? The game is dang near perfect. Well, no, Tropico does have some issues with it becoming stale in certain situations after a while, but it does this to a lesser, much lesser extent than other city builders. Because of two things. One is the weather. It actually impacts the uh, amount of food you can grow, the type of soil that you have, which then enables you to grow different kind of crops. You can plant sugar in an arid region, you need a swampy, very wet region. So if there is no rainfall where you actually made all those sugar plantations, well, you're out of luck. And the game does give you ample tools to see the spread of rainfall, the soil quality and so on. Although the fact that it doesn't tie it in with the end of year report dedicated in your almanac is kind of disappointing. You still have to go manually and see each time where it is. You don't get a breakdown of what happened. It could have been a bit more involved, but that's not a point of it. It's supposed to not be involved in that kind of area. It's not supposed to give you expertise and detailed analysis in things that will actually make you construct a more vital economy on account of you're in a communist dictatorship. The economy working well isn't the point. The point is you remaining in power. And that's what's preventing the game from becoming as stale as some of the other city builders. You are El Presidente. Your only prerogative is to remain El Presidente. It doesn't matter who you have to bribe, jail, send to a dungeon, kill, even excommunicate, brand the heretic, you do everything you have to do to remain there. It doesn't matter if your people starve, it doesn't matter if they die in the streets, it doesn't matter if you kill half the population in a bloody civil war. You must remain El Presidente. Although what kind of El Presidente you actually are depends very much on the kind of character you choose to play as. When you begin the game you get to pick all sorts of traits with advantages and disadvantages that will make you a bit more capable of dealing with situations in a certain way. For example, you can choose as your background that you used to be a teacher. That will give you a bonus to learning so that you will more efficiently educate people within your nation and the intellectual faction will be a bit more supportive of you. You won't have to worry that they're going to plan to overthrow you as often as you should with the other factions. Or 
you can choose for your rise to power to be that you were installed by the CIA and are nothing but a simple puppet of theirs. Or that you're a pop singer named Lou Bega, who no kidding is in the game. The Mambo number no. 5 guy, he's in the game, is a playable character. And you may think, yeah, Mambo number no. 5, he's probably from one of these islands in the crypt, he's German. But his songs were in the German version of the game. Also, you get to choose things like disadvantages. Uh, for example, you get to have Tourette syndromes, which is basically like Donald Trump, where people will actually pay internationally to see your speeches. And you will get money for that. Not a lot, but still, you get money. And you do need money. Even though this is a communist dictatorship, you do need to pay people to do things and to build things and to issue edicts or set up social security for people or, you know, enforce martial law and hope that nobody tries and dares to mess with you ever. Tropical 5, I wouldn't say, is a very deeply complex political simulator because it all boils down to you have to maintain a certain sense of balance between the different factions and ideologies. You have the communists, the capitalists, the intellectuals, the religious, I think there were the fascists too, the ecologists, and of course, the militaristic people. You never want to upset those. The military is what's protecting you from your own citizens, so they generally want to have the highest salaries and live in nice houses, so you will try your best to give that to them and always maintain everybody else at a lower standard so they will feel more important. Or you could assassinate their leaders repeatedly until they are beaten into submission and just cower in fear over you. But again, you will need a really good military support to do that. But if you don't want to be the kind that shoots their own people in an airport because they're there protesting unarmed, like what happened around here, you can be a sort of benevolent-ish dictator, but you are still a complete dictator. Nothing happens without you. There is no delegating. It's your five-year plan or how many years plan you want it to be until you get booted or you get bored. You have to build the houses. You have to build the kind of houses you believe your people are entitled to. You can build them some bunk houses into which they fit four or five stacked one on top of another we can build them a cheap tenement building like the one I live in now because this is the kind of thing that the uh, communist party used to build non-stop because they were cheap horrible and we call them concrete coffins sometimes because they tend to fall down or you can build them better apartments you can build them even condominiums and luxury homes when you do eventually get electricity and all sorts of other stuff. The other stuff being, uh, for the most part, a functional economy. You need to export things in order to get money. You don't really get money from taxes. You can charge people for rent, you can charge people for uh, some things like going to the pub, because the, the pubs, you, you run everything. There is no private industry, no private service sector, nothing is private. You are in charge of everything. And of course, you can embezzle money to put into your bank account and you can even give it back to the people if you're in a charitable mood. But for the most part, it's not as much of a factor as I thought it would be like you can't use it to spend on things for yourself that's something I actually think uh, the sequels did I'm not exactly sure if they did it I think I remember they did but it's something that this one should have done too like you collect all that money but you never actually spend it on anything like maybe you could buy hitmen to assassinate people without the military being involved you know make things a bit more clean and uh, plausibly deniable and since you're in charge of the entire economy you get to decide exactly what you want to do at its essence you begin with a bunch of corn farms Arms. If you're playing a random map, there are scenarios where you begin with uh, different kind of situations. There are a lot of scenarios, by the way. And you decide if you want to go the Banana Republic route, where you just export raw minerals until your island is bone dry, or if you want to actually set up an industry. Now, an industry is a lot more expensive to set up. It requires that you both collect the resources locally and then manufacture them into something more expensive that gets shipped off over land, or over sea or over the air and isn't just corn sold to the Americans because the Yankees sure like them, them popcorns. And to achieve a certain level of um, efficiency in your industry, you do need to have a power plant. 
And that's the thing that always sort of boggled my mind a bit. You have nothing on the island that can power that power plant. You don't have either the coal or the natural gas between which you can choose if you want a more efficient and better running power plant or just one that's cheap. So it's presumed that you do import things from other places. Though you don't have direct control over that, it's, it's abstracted. And I kind of wish it wasn't, like, I wanted to be a bit more involved, but again, that would be going details that may not fit well. They may take away from the core idea that you are a communist dictator, and you're trying to at least make it seem like this place is an island paradise to attract suckers, I mean tourists. Tourism is a very, very lucrative way of actually developing your nation. You can set up hotels that can either be very run down and cheaply, cheaply maintain things with more roaches than people, which is actually more difficult than you think it would be on account of your people will sometimes starve because you're not building any plantations to feed them so they will eat anything they can find on hand to not die. Roaches, for example. It's not specified, but I imagine that's what they do. And you can build all sorts of distractions for the tourists. You can build a marina so you can take boat rides around the island. You can build oh, spas and tennis courts and sport complexes. You can build, well, those sport complexes are actually even for your guys. And you can have Mardi Gras, you have a pub or a restaurant. You can build all sorts of attractions to get people to come and spend money and then leave because you can't sadly kidnap them or assassinate them, which I kind of feel is a missed opportunity. Sure, you would probably upset the USA and they would send Marines and kill you, but if you were under the protectorate of Russia, maybe they wouldn't. I mean, you see what North Korea's up to and you think, yeah, they can get away with it. Why can't I do it? I'm fictional. I should have more ability to be dastardly evil. Though to be fair, um, the sequels did venture into that territory and it became, you're basically playing Dr. Evil. You you kidnap um, scientists and steal monuments and uh, it wasn't as much about being a dictator. It was more about being a cartoon villain so yeah in a way it's better that this game was a bit more focused on that on just the core of being a dictator and as i said you can be a benevolent one you can be a person that actually holds democratic elections every four eight years or something like that and then doesn't meddle with the results because they hope in their heart of hearts that they did a good enough job in order to get the public to vote for them through their own volition also it does heard that you can build news stations and radio stations, TV stations, newspapers, all sorts of things that will constantly spew propaganda in your favor. You can even build El Presidente's childhood home, which is a playground for children that will constantly spout out propaganda in favor of you to children. Now, if that's not one of the most demented things ever put in a video game, I don't know what is. Though again, you can opt to not not do that you can be a more sensible human being and unless you're really good at balancing the economy and the hurricanes don't strike your island 50 times a year you may actually have a chance there may not be a need for the usa to invade you to bring democracy or for the russians to come in and liberate the workers though in some way will still always be a puppet nothing but a cloth rag with some strings dangling in the wind with no destiny of its own on the upside the game is beautiful to look at even today it is still insanely beautiful to look at it's so detailed even when you zoom into the max, the people there are still very good looking. I mean, the model, well not model, the sprites are superb. Sure, the 3D bits with the ships, they, they kind of look like ass because it was 2000 or something. But everything that's 2D in the game is to this day beautiful. And that's something you gotta say about every Tropical game. They all look good. Tropical 3, when it first came out, it was one of the best looking games of this kind of strategy game that I had ever seen. Sure, it ran like absolute crap, but it was beautiful. And you can't really have a tropical game without the music. The music in this game is so fitting. It, it makes you feel like you are in a tropical paradise somewhere on an island off the coast of Cuba that's, that sort of wants to be like Cuba. 
Cuba sort of wants to be that Latin American Caribbean paradise island where no one else can rule except the locals, except El Presidente actually, you know, because he's El Presidente. The music is superb in this game. It's been superb in probably most of the games of the series. It just makes you think of a of a tropical paradise where you can just lounge around and be happy because you're probably one of the tourists you're not living there you're not the one who just had his home demolished by el presidente so he could put in a pool or had your uh, your spouse killed on account of you ran in the election against el presidente even though you lost he, he still holds a grudge tropical is a game that lets you be as evil as you want to and as, as benevolent as you want to but at the end of the day you will always be a dictator there is no two ways about it the people may love you but you're still holding the noose around their neck you know what actually would fit this kind of game if they ever decide to make it? A sort of this world themed tropical game where he plays Vetinari. It's kind of like that, whereas Vetinari is a more benevolent dictator. You could go either way, I guess. As I've said, Tropical has had a lot of sequels and I played pretty much all of them apart from the second one. Tropico 2 was actually the most different game of its, of its series. It was a game where you were a pirate king and you had to enslave people because only the slaves did the work and you had to go rummaging the seas to rob others for treasures and thematically it's amazing but I haven't played it. I should play it. I need to play it. It's a pirate game. Why haven't I played it yet? But I have played the other ones. The other ones as I said they, they sometimes they drift a bit too much into the ridiculous and when Tropical 4 or I think it was Tropical 4 or 5 promised that you would have a dynasty with uh, appointing your uh, your family to cabinets so i said oh yeah yeah this is what the originally this is what it needed the ability to put your driver as a minister or an advisor on some board that decides something very important but he's just there as a puppet and will do nothing good which is what happens in my country constantly even now in the post communist dictatorship era you know the people are still here right things don't change the name change things don't until the people actually die and you know time passes and they forget but tropical 5 didn't do that it, it was kind of shell on that aspect hoping the sixth one will will do better though i think the the main uh, attraction of the sixth one is uh, that they're adding bridges between islands which is something they probably should have done a while ago i think or maybe that was what 5 did too they they sort of merge into each other after a point where you don't actually notice the differences between them anymore which is why 1 and 2 are so absolutely distinctive. They are unique games. One is about being a dictator, one is about being a pirate king. Mechanically, they do have quite a lot of similarities, but thematically, stylistically, they are unique. So, if the cold of winter is too much for you, take a break. Go visit Tropico and maybe, maybe rule it a bit better than some other people would. Or not. It's your choice. You get to decide what little corner of your soul gets to rule this nation. Is it gonna be the one that actually has empathy for people and wants to do as much for them as possible? Or is it the dark corner? The one we all have, the one that sees itself as ruler, as superior to everyone else. The one that wishes its will imposed upon all that lay before it. Here's its chance to spread its wings and fly. And you can find the games on GOG right now. The first two are in a single pack that's uh, around 5 euros and a bit. Uh, Tropico 3, 4 and well, 3 and 4 are a little, a little over 12 euros each and Tropico 5 is 22 euros almost. If you actually want a complete version it's around uh, 34 euros. It, it, it has... They made a lot of DLC for the later ones, like a lot of DLC. A lot. My advice, start with the original. It's still superb. So closes another year of history shows about all the games you sometimes should play or avoid. Depends on if you like them or not. Next time we're gonna have something a bit different because it's the end of the year. Then we're gonna have a week off and then I'm gonna see you on the 5th of January with a new history about something else. Who knows, it may even be a remake of that Frank Herbert's Dune show I did many years ago that took a lot of time to make and was great, but in a different kind of language that no one speaks. Who knows, probably not. Happy holidays. Goodbye.